Should I look at my crosshair or should I look at the mini map? This is a very difficult problem to answer, especially when you're playing Duelist and you're entering a site. In this VOD review with Zasko, I would try to break down some of the things that you can do to increase your awareness during a bomb site execute. One, One guy back site. Okay, we don't see the guy back side. Yeah, we got cut off guard. This is so tough. A Radiant level duelist would see that breach and then scale on him. What I need you to understand here is this omen actually isn't a threat yet. Like he has to literally full W key run up and you'll be able to hear that. Notice how like the question mark lasts for so long. We're not, I'm not saying you have to be aware of this breach as soon as he shoots. I'm saying you need to be aware that there's a question mark here at some point. I'm curious now how long, cause I'm seeing them on the map, the mini map now. I'm curious how long they do appear on the mini map. So 118, I, um... then we get the fight again. He appears at 114 and then 112. Yeah, I feel like that's, a fair bit of time, especially if I'm hearing fights heaven, I probably should glance over, but it's just uh, one thing that I'm very scared to do is take my eyes off the crosshair when I'm holding something. I probably would have like had to maybe unpeak or I don't know. Yeah, it's really tricky with that one. I don't actually know when I should analyze it. I should just sit there and look at people's eyes while they play, but. In the assumption that we made earlier, you would have been able to hear the omen if he sprinted downstairs. So in this case, in this moment, we have like a, a second or two of safety. Then here, you peek out, maybe we could have like tucked behind the box first, get your bearings and then look at minimap and then continue scaling. Like maybe we're not implementing enough pauses in our entry to kind of find those pockets of info. I'm definitely not in something I'm not doing. And we can check in on the these one by one. So activating dash, looking for duels instead of immediately dashing on entries. In other words, getting a kill for the entry for the space instead of actually dashing out for space. What is your kind of experience with this been or how has it been? I've enjoyed it. I have enjoyed it. It's made me put more of a focus on crosshair placement. And I know that that's something I'll have to do in my own time moving forwards. Just because when I'm dashing out, I was like dashing out into a smoke. Right. The fight would kind of just happen randomly. I'm flicking around heaps. But I figured out it was kind of like I had play if I was playing ISO or Rainer. Yeah, yeah. Basically. The fights were very dependent on my crosshair placement, which I've got a decent idea of. It felt like I was in more control of the fights and that because... I was slowing down a tiny bit and not just dashing out. I was able to like still run out, but it was just more thorough. I was able to utilize my aim more. Gotcha. Okay. And then regarding the arena concept, this was a big one that we discussed. How has this been feeling? And specifically what I'm concerned about is the power position. Like, are you finding any success doing it? The biggest game changer, probably okay. the biggest game changer. It was the one that clicked straight away and I made that the first thing that I focused on. But I think it just reshaped the way that I play attack, like having a goal, slowing it down and then finding power positions, playing around the smokes, not not excessively uh, pushing. I feel like it put a it put a reasonable limiter on my aggressiveness. And from there, I was able to really like have more impact, gotcha. even just being more tradable. And then this last note here, the only context I remember for this point specifically was we just had a few rounds on Abyss where we were kind of like lurking and walking around. But do you have any thoughts or comments on this one? This one was a tricky one for me to wrap my head around. I felt like I did kind of apply it, but at the same time, I don't feel like I gave this one as much attention just because I didn't really understand all the situations it could apply. Sure. And I didn't really understand, I guess, there's no I good action we'll say this one lacked a bit yeah yeah it was a bit difficult for me to action that one sure sure okay we're going out here pop dash looking for the duel it's fair i notice you're uh, looking for the duel on this back wall instead of jumping up on the slant here is that intentional just to kind of go for his timing with the dash or like I guess it's just to through. it's just to really try and take rubble control straight away gotcha that's kind of my my thought process i will say i do like that you daddy peaked the uh first angle Kind of like we mentioned on, um, actually, I don't know if you mentioned that. I don't know if that was us, but you did that he picked the, the first angle, which is good. That's good uh, technique. Yeah, yeah. So if we go forward, obviously our dash is gone now, which is a little bit unfortunate um, because we, we had to use it to take rubble. And your is in. There was actually no comms from you or the team that were pushing the smoke. It kind of just happened. Um, it's good that you're being aware of your going forward and you're helping. So that's good. Again, would like to see the smoke here. You do the first one, but I would throw another one there. And then, don't actually know what this smoke is for. I guess you try to block off the single scale site. So there is some type of like thought process going in to use your smokes for the block angles. I think it's probably the wrong one so far. To quickly go into that, we are opening tree and splitting this guy. You want actually this guy to die. So if anything, you'd smoke off this guy. Yeah, or stairs, I guess. 
or Which stairs. Is really more ideal. Yeah, correct. This this. One flag. One guy back site. We, we don't see the guy back side. Yeah, we got cut off guard. This is so tough as a duelist player on when to look at mini map and when not to look at a mini map. Okay, but I want you to know that a radiant level duelist would see that breach and then scale on him. And I don't know if that is like an internal timer. I don't know if that's just because we haven't taken sight yet. I don't know if it's because we just saw like heard bullets. That would be a cue for you to look at mini map. But what I need you to understand here is this omen actually isn't a threat yet. Like he has to literally full W key run up and you'll be able to hear that. So since you don't hear that W key here, when you peek in the site, he can't be here yet. Like you have another like second or two timer. So that might have been a timing for you to check minimap real quick because this guy can't physically be there yet. And then if you did check the minimap on that timer, we would have noticed the breach back site. Notice how like the question mark lasts for so long. We're not, I'm not saying you have to be aware of this breach as soon as he shoots. I'm saying you need to be aware that there's a question mark here at some point. And then the info comes up. This would not happen. Also, we're holding the drop smoke. Um, it's not bad. It's good that you're aware of it. But if this is smoked off, it, he'd be kind of crazy to W key. Like this is a W key peak to go through the wall. Most people wouldn't do that <laughs> unless they're like playing a judge or a shotgun or something like that. So um, if we go along with the arena, that process that we we're going before, the smoke is going from here onto heaven. We should be in this scenario looking to try to take backside space but we're kind of just yep, holding yep. so th there's a few things here but number one we missed the mini map info number two we didn't really follow up with the smoke does that make sense yeah okay any yeah that does make sense any questions comments thought processes that you want to touch on there i'm curious now how long because i'm seeing them on the map the mini map now i'm curious how long they do appear on the mini map for before i sure i'm having to fight so, with breach so 118 because i um 118 and then we get the fight again he appears at 114 and then 76 trees 112 yeah i feel like that's a fair bit of time especially if i'm hearing fights heaven i probably should glance over but it's just uh, one thing that i'm very scared to do is take my eyes off the crosshair when i'm holding something i probably would have like had to maybe unpeak or i don't know yeah it's really tricky with that one i don't actually know when i should analyze it i should just sit there and look at people's eyes while they play but i mean yeah, we could, I we could just go back and look it. Like, boom, we're in cover. We could check minimap again if you wanted to. This, we this. peek out. One flag. We're in cover again. Well, in the assumption that we made earlier, you would have been able to hear the omen if he sprinted downstairs. So in this case, in this moment, we have like a, a second or two of safety. Then here, you peek out. Maybe we could have like tucked behind the box first, get your bearings uh, behind the wall, sorry. And then look at minimap and then continue scaling. Like maybe we're not implementing enough pauses in our entry to kind of find those pockets of info. I'm definitely not in something I'm not doing. Yeah, let's keep going. But that that could have been the round winning uh, clear. If you went backside, killed the breach. Maybe that could have let you buy some time for the raise, but I'm assuming we lose the round off that. More Odin spam. I'm so surprised with their comp that they're just not getting a main control every round. So it's a good it's good on us that we are recognizing that they aren't fighting A, so we take the A space. That part is good. It's just it's actually insane. They have the best A fight comp probably in the game that you would get in ranked. Yeah. And they're not even fighting for it. That's that's just insane. You're doing the uh like dash up draft prep. Like you're doing it at the same time, that's good timing. Get the kill. Really nice shot. One back sight, one holding, one left, one right, blinds, gun behind you. Wow, that's that's tough. That sucks. Um, there's not. I, I actually prefer that you don't scale out. This guy's about wingman. You did kind of just send it into the thing, but I wouldn't really change much this round. It was a good job getting the kill tree. If there's anything, I would say I would like to hear a little bit more comms. You end up saying something about tree yeah can we go tree and then that was your one calm the entire game you get the kill no calm gotcha. you could say are we going oh we could cancel you ran and killed the c player right like there's a lot going on here it's a it's a one one three right this guy's to, to be fair rain killing the c player and okay afk makes sense to just go back just to go back right oh she's not afk but she's in the spawn this makes sense to probably go see yeah just uh being aware of stuff like that the theme so far is increasing awareness Imagine they both die. I was actually like mind blown by that. <laughs> I, just, I was actually like mesmerized. I love that.
Okay, so we're doing the same thing where we're kind of like scaling with gun out. I like it. It's good. The problem is no one went tree, so this makes it a little bit awkward. The only thing to mention too is that routing. Urena ends up going forward and you go right. I actually don't know which one is better. I don't even know if there's like a way you can min-max this because entering on A doesn't feel super good if you don't have tree control. But regardless, I do like that you're activating dash and not just blindly dashing in. Uh, so that's improvement. We should know that there's a player back site. We didn't catch that awareness until just now. Let's see the first time we spot him. I think is right here. Yep. So there he is. And then you get this kill here. And this guy died to the guy back site. Oh, actually, he died to this guy. Um, but he gets spotted on minimap again. So we're just not being aware of this player back site specifically on A site. Nice flood. One heaven, one back site. You get the kill, pop dash. Should be one drop and one site. Yeah. So we don't see the drop guy this time. He's just fighting this heaven guy. We win the duel. That's good. Chamber, chamber from C. One small detail. You don't have to obsess over this at all. Just want to point it out. Come back left here. Fade back site, raise top heaven. You should understand this. You come out, you kill the fade. You see Omen here. Look at minimap real quick. Um, we're, we're just gathering info, right? We just saw fade. Sorry, we saw the raise nade. We saw the fade. We know fade's back site. And then now we just saw Omen. That's three players. We're looking for chamber at this point. And notice how the guy we're fighting heaven isn't the raise. I would have expected this to be the raise. So because it's not the raise, my thought process or like my assumption I make is that he's dropped. And then lo and behold, he is dropped. Something that you can do in situations like this to catch the raise off guard is actually to leave this angle and continue scaling right to fight the drop guy. Because he's not going to expect you to be fighting him. So it's a very small thing here, but I don't know how else to explain it. Information. Collect yeah, I need to be more aware of all the little finer details that add up to make a, a bit of a play eventually. Yes, yes. Because like small timings like this in the chaos, that raise doesn't expect you to swing. And that's kind of what I want you to see. Whereas like you stay hoping that the omen reswings you, but in that time frame, that could have been a, a moment for you to reposition and catch the raise off guard instead of waiting for the omen to reswing. So, something to consider. Um, regardless, we do hit night shots. I think uh, that is kind of the, our biggest strength so far, which is good. Fighting A again. I'm going up here on the slant this time. Well, that's a great flash. Nice, we end up getting the kill. Obviously, it's a little bit sloppy. We don't have the gecko util, so it is what it is. Get the kill. Notice how we aren't really calming anything. You're staying posted for over swings, which is good. But we don't calm anything. It's here. It's didn't break. Situations like these where I just get like, I don't know, I just see red and I just start trying to kill everyone. And then I just forget about the game, I'm not gonna lie. I just like in these specific moments, like there's just so much going on. Dash away from this, I'm like, alright, cool, updraft. And I'm just holding angles. I don't check the minimap at all. I'm just like going for those kills. It's like awareness really goes when I'm in those multi-frag situations, especially. Mm. Okay. Then I think the way that we progress from here is raise awareness when we're in the chaotic positions. Like, and then once we have this down, then we add the comms. Like, I don't think we can force the comms until we get this piece. This comes first and then this comes second. And then once you have more awareness, you can actually have stuff to calm. Because otherwise, it's kind of just going to be like, oh, they're aftershocking me. You're, like, you're calming like stuff that doesn't actually matter. So raise the awareness first. So far, that seems to be the big focus for this upcoming week, in my opinion. Just increasing our awareness so that we can make better decisions. If we get this kill here, you know one site. You can probably just reset go see. See what happens though. Okay. Let's hit with the harbor bolt. Sure. Nice. Get the kills. We do be shooting. We do be shooting. Yeah, T side was better than the previous one. I would say the main thing to note is the awareness, right? If we can increase awareness, we're going to be looking better for sure. Let's try to increase our awareness. Currently, we're missing info on players when we're executing. Practical way to do this, actionable, I guess, would be, I guess, force 
downtime as you're taking a site by entering cover or using smokes as cover to glance at minimap. Realistically, you have like stages of your execute, right? You have stage one, which is like the actual initial take. You're looking at the minimap to see when the util is there so you can time your push. Typically, this is like smokes. Oh, smokes are down. Cool. Okay, my breach is using whatever, maybe a silver dart. Like that's like the initial take. Typically, then you're looking at minimap. And then at some point in the middle of the execute, we need to figure out how, when to look at minimap again to get more updated info. The ideal world, it's just start of the execute, end of the execute, and we don't have to look at the minimap at all. But typically executes like that, that are super fast paced, is in the form of a breach ult, where you have an ultimate where you can kind of just plow through and just take full site space. But it's very rare that you can do that nowadays, especially with so much delay. Um, most executes are going to be uh, inserted with pauses. So if I go to Abyss, I don't know why Abyss, but this just comes to mind. Typically when I execute out of A, there's a silver dart on the ceiling. This is delay. This forces us to pause. Now, if you're out here alone, because you dashed out, we can gather info, which is sitting on a smoke and staring at minimap. Now that one is obvious, but that's kind of the point is I want you to understand the obvious, just so you understand the principle of inserting downtime, like forced downtime by using cover and smokes to glance at minimap. And this one just happens automatically. If you're darted and your teammates are stuck main, you'd probably re-smoke like a minimap. It's a tough thing to do, but increasing awareness is good. Let's look at Abyss attack. So they have Cypher Trip, Swing, and the Smoke, Great Dash, Swing with the Splash, I like that, we just don't dash out, that's good, it's fine, it's a good kill trip, at some point you can think about slowing down, because you activate a dash, you clear close right, boop, pause, look back left, clear close left, pause, at this point you've cleared the two major spots, you cleared close, now you can kind of like, if you're trying to be aware of the cypher trip, you can start shift walking, or you can start even holding crouch. I like to hold crouch, because even when I shift walk- Another thing. Yes, go mm -hmm. ahead. Another thing I'm thinking as well is I could technically smoke off. Um, you explained how you can make the uh, arena a bit smaller by putting a smoke sure. either to the right of the big box or the left. I yep. could smoke one of those temporarily to check the minimap, knowing that site's full clear and heaven smoked. True, this is very true. The most common example of a smoke like this would probably be B site if you don't have a C Link smoke on Lotus. A lot of people like to smoke off C Link as you're kind of fight, fighting breakable or something like that. It, there is a similar pattern here where you could smoke off one of the sides. That is true, 100%. Um, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't throw it so deep because you have to be pretty precise for that. You might actually just smoke something closer. So if you want to smoke off right side and you're coming out, you just clear close right. You might smoke here, block off your right. And it would just be for the like the sole intention of just having a second to check the mini map and sort of gather myself. Yes, but also it gives you cover from the guy that swings back site. So it just it allows you to get safety while also giving you that timing. Yeah. You'd end up clearing close. This guy ends up swinging left. We do get spammed. It, it is what it is. Like if you have a Soba or a Sky, stuff like that doesn't happen, but um it's good as an entry duelist to try to be aware of trips like common trip spots. So I, I can kind of walk through a few just because I just played Cypher. But you have the main trip here that goes from this box that connects to this wall. Uh, the one we died to, which is the floor trip that goes from this ledge at the bomb site here. At this ledge here, like you could put trips all, all along this thing. So this is a dangerous spot for trips. And then uh, the other common trip is like from here to here. So just knowing common trip spots help. Uh, to figure out when you should slow down. But regardless, that was good. I like I like the exec. Yeah, we are way ahead of our team, so we just got to be a little bit careful and figure out where we should route for safety. So you're activating dash, just contacting up here. That's fine. What's the alternative and why? Let's let's kind of go down with both routes. So contacting out with dash and using dash to take space. But kind of like walk me down those two thought two thought processes and what you'd be thinking about. Both of them. What's the so? Uh, what's the alternative one to play more aggressive? Sorry. So dash to walk up. So we're contacting, and then dash to actually yep. use it, like top side or something. Um. I like if I was to do that play, I would probably push right up and then just launch myself into heaven and get a timing. That's like my approach to if I was to dash out, and it would just simply yeah to be that catch him off guard. And then ideally I'd fall back after getting a pick, play advantage, but I don't choose that just because we're not in necessarily a disadvantageous position. And I could 
sort of slow it down, walk up. I, I think I calm that I don't clear backside as well, just to be safe, but I end up still trying to get a bit of a timing. Uh, uh, I actually don't even know the call where I push, but- um, Yeah, I don't know, spawn. <laughs> yeah, I do end up pushing that, I think. Okay, let's and back up a little bit. It's a similar timing, but it's it's sort of a bit slower and safer. Yeah, so the assumption you're making is that site is clear, but you're calling back site just in case. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, so um, maybe this is just a region thing. Maybe it's a rank thing. I'm making the assumption when I rotate back here that there could be an anchor, which is why I'm worried about that. We get the kill, but we don't know for sure that we're lurked up. It would be a different story if you were here and you were and we just got the kill. Like, let me back up. Yes, if you were here and you heard them rotate off or it makes sense for them to rotate off and then you lurk up, then there's no way that they could be backside. But obviously like, I mean, you're playing against a Yoru. This guy could TP. But also, Clove and Cypher are both alive. Those are two side anchors. Well, technically Clove is not really a side anchor because of the smoke range. But the point being is a controller and a Sentinel alive. We can't make the assumption that site is full clear if you don't have the data. All we saw was one player and he died. We don't know if they're pushed up mid. We don't know if this guy's still here. This guy could still be up here, like, or he could be pushed up window. Like, we don't really know. So in this case, because we're going for timing, um, which is good to go for the timing. I think you should secure the space, kind of like what you mentioned as you're rotating in. But I think we need to respect that there could be an anchor here. And in that case, I would probably smoke dash up here to see if there's anyone close right. Drop down and then look to clear the backside player. Um, but if you're already on this lurk earlier and they don't have time to rotate here, then I think it's fine. But yeah, it looks like it's going to work out. What the heck? There was a guy behind you. He was on the shelf. So our thought process or my thought process that there could be a player here is true. It's not the agent I was thinking of, if I'm being honest, I would have expected probably Clove or Yoru because um, I think Cypher was on A. But there is a player there and you can see we kind of got lucky that we kind of like routed right below him and he didn't see us. What do you think about that, I guess? Is that land? I haven't cleared Bexa. One yeah, she saw us. I don't know how I didn't even see him. Yeah. Uh, did I? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, he saw us. Yep. Oh my gosh. I don't even think you recognize that, yeah. that the server was there. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. One heaven as well. Yeah, we have 50 seconds. Nice. He kills. I mean, that Cypher is as surprised as, as we are about the Sova because he kind of just got shot in the side of the head. Activate dash. Okay. Peeking technique here. You zoom in a little bit too early. Right. We're also not dead peeking anything. You also have two smokes, but that's besides the point. Let's pretend we don't have any smokes here. You want to peek this? You should be ADSing as you're entering this the peak. Like if this would, the timing of this ADS would be for this peak. But now you're swinging this angle while you have decreased movement speed, which is not ideal. Um, but regardless, you know where he is. He knows where you are. You could play this angle with a little bit more finesse. It, this just feels like you're brute forcing it for no reason. Yeah, I don't, okay. I don't know if how do you feel about that. I guess. Um, I preempt where I think he, I didn't expect him to run all the way right, I guess. That's like kind of throws me off. Like I preempt where I sort of expected him to be, which was just to be holding me from like a really wide position. I don't know, probably illogical to think that, but yeah, that one's a tricky one. I don't know too much about ADS timing and how to go about that per se. Like I have no put thought into that. So there's two things that's an important at peak velocity, AKA your speed and who who has the angle already we don't have the angle where we have severe angle disadvantage so until you're out in the open he has the advantage now, now it's an even I don't think fight i should have even like jiggled uh just so wide swung it i think yeah. i should have at least jiggled it or jump peaked it or just smoked myself and gone wide or something. i agree i agree i agree um just looking at the time i do have to wrap this up i think um, but let's kind of summarize what we saw on attack. There wasn't really anything specific on Abyss that we saw, but I do like that we are using the, uh, kind of activate dash and walk out. That part is good. Um, if there's one thing I would add would be that rounds where we're heading back to lurk. 
the round we just saw. Uh, and then using smokes to add those force pauses to get some awareness. Um, but one other thing I'll add, and this is going to be a quick side tangent. If you're playing against Cypher, most of your entries will be up da updraft dashes. Uh, the, also, the updraft dash on A site is very, very strong. This one here, updraft dash top site. Th this entry is just really strong. So I know this kind of counters the point that we made here, activating dash and looking for duels. That is good. It's, um, it's situational. It's situational, exactly. Next week, we probably should look at defense, but the main thing that we need to work on for this week, I think is increasing awareness. We're on the upwards trend. Um, as you can see, we just won the last five and this week, uh, the last 20 games, we are 14 and six. So we're on the upwards trend. I'd say keep going at what we're doing here until it becomes automatic. Right, like it becomes subconscious and moves from system one to system two. And then we can increase awareness. And then eventually we're going to be incorporating some communications, uh, more communication on our attack side to make it a little bit more fluid. Um, any questions, comments, concerns for me? Too much. I, I definitely, honestly, I feel like I should put the entire week towards just, yeah, once again, focusing on that awareness side of things because I feel like I do struggle with that a lot. Mm -hmm. But actionables, yeah, it's just about finding those things. I got, I'll find a little system to try and ingrain it into my head maybe i'll keep track of how many times i check the mini map in a in a game you know to see if i can tally it up and stuff like that trying sure. to try and really make it happen but honestly that alone would probably change the trajectory of a lot of my attack rounds yeah i mean awareness is such a big thing you know such a big thing like we didn't even notice the sobo just killed our teammate on that round like this round here that, that's kind of crazy maybe it's like you're so dialed in on your cross like that you're not even getting audio cues I'm full like dude I'm so locked in on the crosshair right now like in this exact moment like as soon as that silver shoots like am I like I'd be like what the heck just happened like how's that guy there you know like that would like make me I, spaz I didn't out. even know he was there right I, I, I'm watching this back for the first time realizing he was there now like mm -hmm. I had no idea he was there right and that I don't know if that's like an audio setting thing or like I really don't know but we definitely have to increase that awareness um but with that said, any comments or questions you want to address before I let you go? Um, not today. I think I'm pretty happy with that, like in terms of direction to go in. It's pretty clear and pretty obvious for me. 